All right, so here here's where we left it yesterday in Java 2. So what we're going to do is take a look at the game model, and we have a couple methods we're going to have to create. Now inside the game model, again, we have a few uh, constants. This one's interesting, the max number of turns. So you have 13 sets of roles that you can do in a Yahtzee game. But we figured that out using the other, other, the other uh, constants. Inside the constructor for the game model, we set up our scoring categories. So integer arrays that's that keep track of all our scores, and then parallel arrays of booleans to say whether or not that category has been used. Most of the time, parallel arrays aren't aren't um, a good idea, but I think here it's fine. And then the current term number turn number we want to start at it out at one. Now what we're shooting for is to be able to um, figure out if it's a three of a kind or not. So let's do that. I'm going to uncomment out uh, the three of a kind method so that we can see what it looks like with color coding. Okay, so here's our uh, is three of a kind method. This is a predicate method. method. A predicate method is one that returns either true or false. So I usually put the word is at the beginning of those. Is this a three of a kind? And we pass in the dice. So you know our, our dice class, we pass in an object of type dice. And it's going to look at those dice to figure out whether or not this role is a three of a kind. Come back to talk about that. But here we create the uh, return value called found three of a kind. We do an integer called i. And then we do a loop. We're going to go through something called the frequency table to figure out if we have a three of a kind. And if not, we'll do this. I'll return that value. So one of the methods we need that we don't have right now is this method to build a frequency table. Now, frequency table is kind of odd. Let me uh, just bring up Notepad or something. And I want to show you what a frequency table is so that we understand what we're talking about. So here's Notepad. And this is just to demonstrate what a frequency table might look like. Format, font, we'll make it kind of big so that we can see it. So right now we have five numbers in an array. Like say, say we have a roll of a one and then the roll of a three and five let's say 1 a 4 and another 1 so th these are our dice values see over here so this is our uh, die values after we do our, our our roll we'll have these die values available but the problem is now comes time to try to figure out whether this is a 3 of a kind well, this is where it gets kind of hard because you go, okay, well, for three of a kind, I have, I have to have three of the same thing and then two of some uh, something else. One approach might be, let's sort these so that all the ones are next to each other. So one way you could you go about this is say, oh, okay, I'm going to sort them. So change the order of the dice. Right, yeah. So We're changing the array, the arrangement of the array. So the number on the dice would still be Yeah, it would still be valid, right? It's just worth scooting around. So you can imagine you have the five dice and I go, okay, I want to save these three, so I'm going to squish those together. So this is one approach, but the problem is here, you could have a three of a kind at the beginning, or suppose you have twos. One situation would be, okay, three of a kind could be in the middle after we sort. Or say it could be where the three of a kind is at the end. So there's three different ways a three of a kind would manifest itself if we just looked at the, the dice array. But there's a structure that 
uh, when you're doing stuff like that or this where you're doing a poker game or something like this, this is kind of like poker, it's better to build something called the frequency table. Frequency table. And what is a frequency table? Well, if we look at our first role or our first uh, example, We're going to have a frequency table that looks like this. This also will be an array, but these are all the uh, indexes into the array. So this is an array. Here, these are indexes. And what an index is, is which slot in the array are we talking about? Here's the first slot, here's the second slot. goes all the way down to six. Why doesn't it go to five? So you might be asking that question. Because up here we only have five, and down here we have six. Why would that be? And the answer is, these are all the possible roles that you can have uh, rolling a six-sided dice. Right? So we're going to look at our role and convert it into a frequency table. So here's all our, our values. We're going to say, okay, I've got, I've got a 1 to start with, so I'm going to add 1 to the 1 slot. Okay. So I'm adding 1 there to that number 1 slot. Then I have a 3, so I'm going to add 1 th now to the 3 slot. The rest of these are start out as 0. So I'll, I'll write those in right now. So when you start, all the slots are set to zero. Okay. And then we go to the next die, and that has another one in it. So we're going to add another one to this one. So that will give us two, right? And then we have a four, so we go down to our four, four slot. And we add one to that, which gives us one, right? And then we have another one. So we add one more one to this one. And that gives us three. So our frequency table now has a three. And it has a one in the three slot and it has a 1 in the 4 slot. So now, all you have to do is look down through this list, and if one of these slots have 3 or more in them, then this is a valid 3 of a kind roll. See how we have 3? That's the number of times we rolled a 1 in our array here, our roll array. So it tells you how many you have of each type. We have three ones, we have one three, and we have one four. Is this a valid three of a kind roll? You do a loop and you say, is this more than three or greater than or equal to three? Hey, it is. I'm done. It's a three of a kind. But say the three of a kind is later, you'd have to go through all of them and say, is any of these three or higher? And if you find a three or higher, you go, oh. The computer can figure out, hey, this is a three of a kind. You don't have to sort anything. All you have to do is build this frequency table. Take a look at it, loop through it one at a time, and see which ones, see if one is set to three or higher. So that's what we're doing in code. Kay. So here, <coughs> we create a new variable. It's an array of integers like we just saw, and we're calling it the freak table or the frequency table. The problem is, uh, I don't have a build frequency table function in our dice class. So we need to go to the, our dice class and add that method. Okay. So let's go to the dice. And what we're going to try to do is build this frequency table. So I did this earlier, so I'm going to take the comments out. 
So this is kind of odd. A frequency table, build frequency table method, returns an array of integers. This is the first time I think we've returned an array. You don't have to say how big the array is, but you do have to say that it's an array. And the way you show that is putting an empty set of square brackets. And this is where all the magic happens. Okay, so we create a local variable called i. That's just going to be our index. And here is where we actually build our frequency table. We get the number of sides on the dice. We add one because we wanted to go from one to six instead of zero to five. And then here, in the comments, I just want to read through these. Get the value of each die in the set of dice. Use the value to index into the frequency table array and increment the count for that roll value inside the table. So here we're going through each, each die. So you say my dice get the first die, get that value use that value to index into the frequency table and these two plus signs means add one to it. This code here is really, really hard to figure out. But this is where all the magic happens in here. First you get the value from the dice for that slot. Or say it's the first die, so it'd be die number zero. Go get that value. Whatever value that is, say it's a five, I'll use that 5 to, to go into the frequency table array, and this will add 1 to that slot, the plus plus. So you might have to think long and hard about why this works, but you're going to have to do some think time. Hopefully by going back to the video, this will make more sense. But there's three things going on. First, you get the value of the roll. Next, to use that value, index into the frequency table. Once you have the right slot, add one to it. So make sure that makes it into your uh, dice class. You haven't changed the dice class in a while. I'm just adding some additional functionality. Okay. So back to the game model. Notice now our red line goes away. So we build the frequency table. Uh, we set a variable to see if it's a three of a kind. We're going to assume that it isn't. Now we're going to go loop through the frequency table one slot at a time. And what we're looking for is if we can find an entry in the fre frequency table that's greater than or equal to three. If we see that in the frequency table, then we're going to flip the flag and say, no, it's not false anymore. It's true. We actually found it. And then You'll finish up the loop, but then what you return from this is that yes, it is a three of a kind, or no, it isn't. Say you don't find a three or higher in this loop, then found three of a kind will set be set to false. Why do we care whether it's a free three of a kind? The answer is we don't want the, the player to say, hey, this is the three of a kind, and it's not, not really a three of a kind, and we score it by adding all the dice together. We're not going to allow our player to cheat. The computer is going to verify that, yeah, this is a three of a kind before we score it as a three of a kind. So here's your three of a kind method. So to finish up on three of a kind then, we have to go into our frame class. So I'm doing that now. And we have to add the smarts for three of a kind on the UI side. Look at all that stuff. So I'm just perusing the code, trying to find three of a kind. Wow, that's a lot of code so far. Okay, here it is. When they, the event is when they press the three of a kind button, we're going to try to figure out if it's a three of a kind. And if it is, then we want to set the score. I'm going to uncomment this code now, and we'll take a look at it and see. Now, we'll note that there's a few methods in here that we need that aren't available yet in the game model. Game is our, our, our object for the game model, and we need these three methods. Set, use, lower scoring category, because that's three of a kind. Add them up. That's if it is a three of a kind, we want to add up all the dice. And then we want to set the score. So we need these three methods. Set, use, lo lower score category, add them up, and set lower score cat. And that's where you set the score. This is set use lower score cat, so whether or not it's used or not. You can only use a category once. 
we go back to our game model and we have to define those three methods. Yeah, so this one here. Set lower score category. So we pass in the index. Well in this case, it'll be three of a kind constant. And also pass in the score. And it will set the score equal to the lower score category. Here's another one that we need. Set use scoring category. And what we're doing is just setting it true or false whether or not that category is used. And then finally, add them up. This just goes through the array and adds all the dice together. So you'll need to add those to your, uh, your Yahtzee game. Now when we go back here, these three things that we're missing go away because we just... Uh, we just created those methods. So then the logic here goes like this. We'll assume that the score is zero. We go into the array that sets that the toggle button's already been pressed, and we set that equal to true. We advance our game state into the scoring state. Then we check to see if the, the role is actually a three of a kind. And if it is, we set the score equal to the the sum of all the dice. And then finally, we store that score that we just calculated into the game model for that scoring category. Here I'm not so sure about this one, but I put that one in there as well. The goal you want to have at the end of this is you have the ability to score a three of a kind. So what does that look like in, in practice? So you roll it. I have two twos. I'm going to roll again. Here's my third two. So I'm going to score this. Let me just roll one more time. Yeah. So I've, I have a three of a kind. So I click on three of a kind and I get 15. Well, let's add them up and see if that's right. Four plus two is six plus two is eight plus two is 10 plus five is 15. Three of a kind. So I got three twos, right? Yeah. You think with three of a kind, you would just add the three together, but no, it's the whole, whole roll. So let me try this again. Now, I want to show you what happens when they don't have a three of a kind. So here I don't have anything. I got one, three, four, five, six. The worst roll in Yahtzee. That's the worst one. Nothing matches. It's, well, I guess this is a small straight. Three, four, five, six. So if I click on the three of a kind score button, I'm not going to, I don't want the computer to add all these up together because it's not a three of a kind. I want it to say zero if they click on this. So I click, it's zero, okay? So that's why you, you have to know whether or not it's a three of a kind before you score it. You don't want to rely on the player to be honest. You have to do that. Make sure that the game enforces the fact that, hey, you really have to have a three of a kind before you score it. So now we've done three of a kind. If you're done with that and you'd like to do the next one, try four of a kind. It's the exact same kind of structure. So you can do that. That's all.